I'll enter the science fair. The judges nod, scribbling something on their clipboards, and move on without another word. It was your idea to participate, and now look what happened. Jack, don't blame me. I should never listen to you, Ben. English speaking course. Hey everyone! Today, I will bring you guys another story about life choices. Do you ever wonder how the decisions we make can change the course of our lives? Or how our past can affect our future? Well, today's story is going to dig deep into that. Okay, let's begin. In the corridors of Millennial High School, you can hear the laughter, <laughs> sense the energy, and most importantly, you can feel the looming presence of a prankster. His name? Jack. Quick with a joke, quicker with a cheeky smile, Jack's days are never dull. Jack's pranks are the stuff of legends in this school. And if you've ever been to Millennial High, you'd know his favorite target, Miley. Meet Miley, a 19-year-old literature aficionado. She's got her nose perpetually stuck in a book and a passion for words. But today, her love for stories will be interrupted by a tale of mischief. <laughs> really, Jack? In the library? What's next? A pie in my face during poetry club? Oh, pie. Huh. You're giving me ideas, Miley. Oh, I shouldn't have said that, should I? Too late. But hey, let's call this a soundtrack to your reading experience. You think this is funny? Come on, Miley. It's cushionary literature. Get it? Because of the whoopee cushion? Oh, I get it. Just like you, getting into college will be a joke. If you keep this up. Ouch, Miley. But do you know what you have missed since you got into college? What? Your chances of having a social life with all those books. At least some of us actually take academics seriously. Oh, but there is science in a whoopee cushion. The whoopee cushion operates on the principle of compressed air, which is a subset of fluid dynamics in physics. Did you seriously just try to legitimize a prank with physics? Hey, I'll use whatever I can to defend my art. Art? You're pushing it. Pushing it is exactly how a whoopee cushion works. You're incorrigible. And you're unforgettable, which is why pranking you is so much fun. Well, unforgettable or not, you're walking a fine line, mister. Yeah, maybe I am. Maybe we both are. The air is different today at Millennial High. As students shuffle between classes, they can't help but notice a colorful poster in the hallway. It's that time of year again, the science fair. And who should spot it first but Jack's trusty sidekick, Ben. Unleash your genius. Man, this is the perfect chance for Jack to come back to his true love, science. Hey man, have you seen the science fair poster? This could be your big comeback. A science fair, huh? The only science I'm interested in nowadays is the science of pranks. Dude, come on. You were the science genius of our class. 
Remember the robot you built that could make sandwiches? Yeah, it only made peanut butter and jelly, but it was a masterpiece. Exactly. You have a talent, man. Don't waste it. Yeah, well, that talent didn't do me much good in the past, did it? I get it, man. I do. But you can't let one bad experience dictate your entire future. Easy for you to say. Hey, Miley! Are you thinking of submitting your essay to the literature journal again this year? Yes. Even though I got rejected the last time, I have reworked it. I'm hoping for a better outcome. That's brave of you, especially after the critiques you received. I don't think I'd have the courage to try again. Well, rejection is just another stepping stone to success, isn't it? I guess so. But don't you get tired of always pushing and trying? Of course I do, but I can't let that stop me. My passion for literature isn't something I can just put aside. At this point, Jack and Ben, who are still in earshot, start paying attention to Miley's conversation. Even if nobody recognizes my passion for literature now, it doesn't matter. In five, ten years, I will succeed. I'm going to keep trying until I do. You really are something else, Miley. Most people would have given up by now. <laughs> you know what? I'll do it. I'll enter the science fair. Really? That's awesome, man. But I'm doing it my way. Buckle up, Ben. Science has never seen a genius like me. That's the spirit. Let's show them what we've got. You know, hearing Miley talk about her passion just made me realize that I've been running away from something I love. It's never too late to change, man. You've got this. Okay, Ben, I've got some ideas churning in my head already. And so, with a newfound sense of purpose, Jack takes the first step towards reclaiming his lost passion for science. All thanks to a spark of inspiration and a best friend who never stopped believing in him. Armed with newfound enthusiasm and a rekindled love for science, Jack plunged into creating his science fair project with gusto. This is going to be epic. Just a few more adjustments and it'll be a masterpiece. Dude, this looks insane. What exactly is it? It's a miniature self-sustaining ecosystem. Watch this. Jack activates the device. LED lights glow. Tiny mechanical bees start pollinating artificial flowers and a small stream of water circulates. For a moment, everything seems perfect. Wow, man, you're going to blow their minds. I hope so, Ben. The gymnasium had been transformed into a carnival of creativity. Each student vying for the spotlight with projects ranging from the deceptively simple to the mind-bendingly complex. His table has a banner reading, The Future of Ecosystems, a Miniature Model. So the LED lights should come on as soon as the judges approach, and the mechanical bees should start their thing when I press this button. Man, you've thought of everything. This is going to be great. As the judges made their entrance, the room went from a bustle of enthusiasm to a nerve-wracking stillness, each student's eyes following the judges' every move. Okay, this is it. Showtime. Wow! Interesting. So, you believe this can be scaled up for larger ecosystems? Absolutely. The potential applications are limitless. Hmm, but isn't this a bit too theoretical? What's the practical use case right now? 
Well, it serves as a blueprint for future sustainable models. It can. The judges nod, scribbling something on their clipboards, and move on without another word. Jack's shoulders slump. He knows it didn't go as well as he'd hoped. Don't worry, man. You did great. You never know. They might surprise you. For Jack, it was the moment of truth. A moment that failed to validate his efforts and passion, leaving him teetering on the edge of an emotional abyss. Hey man, don't worry. It was a tough competition. A tough competition? It was a slaughterhouse, and my project was the lamb. I thought your project was amazing, Jack. You shouldn't give up on science because of one setback. It was your idea to participate, and now look what happened. Jack, don't blame me. We both know this is something you love. Then maybe it's high time I stopped loving it. I should never listen to you, Ben. Despite his best efforts, Jack felt crushed by the weight of expectations and judgments. It was a hard pill to swallow, and for a moment, he lost himself in the swirl of disappointment, resentment, and blame. Question and answer. Number one. What is Jack known for in Millennial High School? Jack is known for being a prankster, and his pranks are legendary in the school. Number two. Who is Jack's favorite target for his pranks? Jack's favorite target for his pranks is Miley. Number three. What is Miley's passion and interest? Miley's passion and interests are literature and reading books. Number four. What is the inspiration behind Jack's decision to participate in the science fair? Miley's determination and passion for literature inspire Jack to participate in the science fair and rekindle his love for science. Number five. What does Jack create for the science fair, and how does it work? Jack creates a miniature, self-sustaining ecosystem for the science fair. Number six. What is the outcome of Jack's presentation at the science fair? Jack's project isn't mentioned when the winners are announced, leaving him disappointed and questioning his passion for science. So, what do you think Jack's next steps should be after his disappointing experience at the science fair? How could he overcome his setback and rediscover his passion for science? Comment down below and let me know. Don't forget to practice your English every day to improve your English level. Watch the video for one week. Try to think and speak in English every time. Listen and repeat the lesson out loud to improve your listening and speaking skills fast. Thanks for watching. Please give us a like, share, and comment. Click here for more useful videos.